So the church has a very, very rich history of music, does it not? I mean, to start all the way at the beginning, how many of you heard like one of your personal faves pop up there in that? So he did a really good job, didn't he? Yeah, we're going to be talking about music and church uh, for the next uh, for the next four weeks, counting this week for four weeks. We're going to be talking about worship in the church, right? And and uh, it's an opportunity for us uh, as a church to to spend time on one of the basics, one of the foundational things that are a part of of uh, you know coming to church and being a believer. And and uh, even though it's one of the basics, even though it's foundational. Uh, you got to work on your foundation every so often. You got to get back to the basics. You got to make sure that that you're good on that. And and the reason that uh, we're we're doing this is is twofold. One, uh, we do have a new worship guy coming in in September, which we're really excited about. And uh, and and uh, yes, that is also worth clapping about. Yes, yep. And uh, and and so whenever there's a change like that, a shift. Um, it kind of can make some people nervous, and uh, and trust me, I know there's a lot of opinions about what worship on Sunday morning should look like here at Hope Summit because I hear them, um, and uh, and so what we're doing is is uh, we're just taking an opportunity just to stop and talk about what it's supposed to be about, right? What does God's word say about it? What you know? What are His expectations for? Because I think I guys, I've been a part of many different churches. Okay, I've I've worked like professionally, as a pastor for in the, in the last uh, 13 years in three different churches. Um, I did internships in two different churches before that, and then, of course, I grew up in churches, right? And so my experience of church throughout my life, I've seen a lot of different churches in the way they worship, okay? Some churches get really super excited, and they move, and they express themselves with their bodies, and they sing really loud, and, you know, they, they do that, and they see that kind of worship. I've been to ch- some churches that are you know, very reverent in their worship. It's a, it's a, it's a matter of respect, and they honor it, right? Uh, but they're also some, sometimes very stoic in the way that they uh, present themselves. Uh, and then I've been to other churches where people are just kind of waiting around for the sermon. I mean, this is really what it was. They're the, like, I'm just here to take communion because that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm a Christian, right? And uh, and so I, I've seen I've seen this example in many different forms and fashions, and I've been here at Hope Summit now for five years, and I can tell you, that we have had different weekends where I felt like I was in a different church when it comes to worship. Okay, I've, I've felt them all. And so I think before we have a new guy come in, right, I think it's good for us to get back to the basics, hit the reset button a little bit, you know, and, and just pause and refocus about what this time is supposed to be about. Because, guys, here's the one thing, and here's, here's the main reason why we're doing this. Because I know the power in a singing church. Okay? There's power in worship. There's something beautiful. The first, when I was watched that the first time, guys, I was tearing up. Right? And I don't really like a cappella music. Okay? It's not my thing. Right? But I was tearing up because the richness of the words that were being sung, the beauty that comes with music. I just, I mean, in general, I just love music. Music has a way of connecting our heart, our minds, our bodies all together. It's a beautiful gift that God has given us. And we want to use it the right way. We want to give it back to him. And there is power. There is, there is great joy and peace. And just, the, I mean, God just, we, we, we connect with God in a different way when we sing. And I want to see that happen at Hope Summit. And I want to see it consistent. And so to do that, we're going to take it more. So I hope you're ready because we're doing the sermon right away, and then we're going to worship afterwards, right? So we're mixing things up a little bit here. So we're going to learn about it and then give us a chance to actually uh, apply what we've learned. So I hope you've had your coffee, because sermon's starting right now. You ready? All right. So we're going to pray. Now, again, why we pray before we preach, before we open up God's Word, before we read His words, because we, we want to invite God to change our hearts, right? And, I, and I'm going to say this as your leader who loves you. If you have had strong and negative thoughts about Sunday morning worship, okay, please do the hard work right now and ask God to open your heart, okay? Because, guys, and, and I'll be the first one to say, my understanding and my expectations of worship are often focused on me, not God. And so we need to repent of that, okay? And so let's just ask God to shape our hearts with his word right now. Let's pray. God, we ask you that you would help us now because, God, one, you're good and we love you. 
and, and you're worthy of all the worship that we have. But God, we're broken and we miss it up. We mess it up sometimes. We mix it up. We get distracted. We start doing it for the wrong reasons. So Lord, we ask that your word would reset us back to your will. Help us to see worship the way you see it. Help us to understand Sunday morning singing the way that you see it. May our expectations be your expectations. May our heart be like your heart. Use your word to reshape us now. In your name, Jesus, we ask. Amen. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to be going to like the scripture that every, if you go to any worship pastor and say, hey, what scripture should I preach on about worship? They will tell you Romans. Anyone know what it is? Romans 12, 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2. So if you have your Bibles, you can flip over to that. If you don't, it'll be on the screen behind you. We're going to be looking at the words of Paul. Paul was a missionary who uh, went out from the Jews, took the message of Jesus that was really spreading to the Jewish nation first, and he said, nope, the, Jew, the Gentiles need to hear it. He was called by God to go do it. He had a cushy, awesome life as a Pharisee. He was doing very well for himself. He was very successful. He was young and in charge, and things were great, right? He left all of that so that he could bring the good news of God to the, to the whole wide world, right? And for the record, you and I, hold a, uh, we owe a lot to Paul. Because if he didn't go out and share the message the way that he did, us Gentiles might not have heard it the same way. So I think that's why we have a lot of his gospel, a lot of, uh, sorry, a lot of his, uh, his, uh, his writings in the New Testament. In fact, Romans, you could almost consider it as kind of, Jesus, as kind of Paul's gospel on Jesus. If you want to know what Paul would preach when he'd go into new towns, Romans was that because he had never been to Rome before. He was actually traveling there soon, and he sent a letter ahead to say, this is, I'm Paul, this is what I, you know, like he was laying out for them what he would be preaching and what he would be sharing, and he also asked for money because he was going to be traveling on, right? And so that's, what, that's why we have Romans, because he was writing to the Christians in Rome, okay? So verse, chapter 12, one, verses 1 and 2, he just says it. This is worship. You ready for it? All right. Therefore, yeah, I'm pausing on purpose there, I know. When we see the word therefore in God's word, we need to ask the question, what's it there for? I have a Bible college student up front who just said it. Yeah, when I was in Bible college, we got that a lot, okay? Reading God's word in context is absolutely necessary. So when you are reading your Bible and you come across the word like therefore, or you come across since, therefore, but, because, whatever, you come across those words, it's really healthy to stop and go backwards and try to figure out what they were saying before this, because that means they're building on a thought. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to stop, and we're going to go back to chapter 11, okay? We're going to go back to chapter 11. Now, chapter 11, and a little bit before that, is all about Paul saying that Jews, this message for about Jesus is not just for you, it's for the Gentiles as well. And here's what God has done. The law didn't work. And, and, and helping us connect with God. And that's kind of the point. The law was there to show us how far off from God we were, how badly we needed a Savior, and it's not just for you anymore, Jews. Yes, those Gentiles, they used to, you used to call them unclean, no longer in Christ. No longer. Okay, that Jesus, the message of Jesus has come for every single man, woman, and child upon this earth. Everyone gets a chance. Okay, so that's what he's saying in chapter 11. And then he breaks out into what's called a doxology. Now, if you have a Bible like mine, you'll have like a little heading at the top, and it says doxology in uh, chapter 11, verses 33. Let's read that together now, okay? It says, Oh, the depths and the riches and the wisdom of the knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has ever been his counselor? Who has ever given God given to God that God should have to repay him. For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Right? Therefore. So what he's done is he's, he's, he's talking about the goodness of God's grace, how it's not just for the Jews, it's for everyone. And he breaks out into this praise. And then he says, therefore, because everything was made in and through and for him, because all glory goes to God, therefore, 
I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of his great mercy, he can't help himself. He has to go back to that point. In view, of, He just got done talking about it, but he's going to say it again. In view of his great mercy, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Okay? Now, we could have just stopped on those, that verse right there, those couple of verses right there. But now you have a greater understanding of where Paul is coming from. So the question we need to ask, simple, basic, foundational question, what is worship? Well, there it is. Now, it would be really tempting right now for me to move on to say, okay, so let's talk about what it means to be a living sacrifice, because that's what it is, right? Well, that's a typical American response to God's word. Let's actually stop for a quick moment, though, and recognize another important thing, that Paul was a Hebrew reading and speaking, Greek reading and speaking Jew, who lived in ancient times. And the way that they processed their world, the way that they brought in information, and the way they filtered it through their worldview is vastly different from that of a modern-day American. Okay, Not only that, but he was writing in Greek, which, for the record, compared to the English language, is kind of like a great scholar talking to a teenager who says like all the time. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. Okay, the English language is very simple. And put the English language inside of the modern-day American's brain that immediately wants to seek out answers right away. And sometimes we can draw wrong conclusions from words. And so let's talk about what Paul says, true and proper worship. What was he saying? Okay, so true and proper worship. we got to understand what that is. What is worship? True and what is true and proper worship? There's two words, two Greek words. Logikos and Latreia. Logikos, Latreia. Now, Logikos might make a lot of sense because you, you know, we have our English language logic. The problem is, is that the Greek understanding of Logikos was not Spock's understanding of logic. Okay? It wasn't all head with no heart. That's not the way that they understood logic. Okay? Uh, logic was this was yes it was mind but it was also heart and soul it was a it was this it was this culmination of the two together that would help make decisions okay that it's the whole man the whole woman making a decision not just their understanding but also through their soul through their spirit okay and and and, and the word latreia latreia means uh, it does mean worship, yes, but it also very much in the sense of like a service kind of worship, a giving of oneself kind of worship. Okay, so a, another way of, of interpreting this would be the logical, like that, that worship is the logical service of, of a living sacrifice. That's what worship is. It's like this holistic, the, the, the logical, soulful response to God. Okay, and, and so Paul is saying that in view of God's greatness, in view of the fact that all things were made in him, through him, and for him, that he is the center of the universe, not us, in view of that, and in view of the fact that instead of leaving us stuck in our sins, he had mercy on us, and instead of leaving us as, as slaves to death, he saved us. Instead of leaving us as enemies because we were choosing to rebel against him, he made us sons and daughters. In view of this wonderful, great mercy, let, uh, it is the logical, soulful response to, to do something, to sacrifice oneself as we live our lives. Okay, That's what he's trying to get across. And you know what's really interesting is I really kind of pull this apart you know what you don't see up there at all? You don't see anything about singing, do you? Yeah, why is that? Because all thumbs are fingers, but not all fingers are thumbs. Okay? Does that make sense? All thumbs are fingers, but not all fingers are thumbs. All praise, singing to God, all praise is worship. But not all worship is singing. Okay? It is one aspect of our worship. I had a gal come into my office, and she was stuck in a pattern of poor behavior, right? It's something that she had struggled with her whole life, and she had kind of gotten over it a little bit, and then she fell back into it. You know how that goes. 
when she came into my office and she said, listen, I know that God has something better for me. And I know he loves me and I know I'm not forsaken because of this, but I just, I, I want it gone because I know he doesn't want it to be a part of my life. But I've tried this and I've tried that. I don't know what to do. Can you please help me? And so we sat there for an hour discussing next steps, what she could do, uh, you know, and, and, and we set up this plan and it was great, right? And she walked out of there feeling a lot less burdened, feeling ready to take on the world, feeling ready to take on this thing, okay? That was worship. Okay, what she did right there was worship because it was a logical, soulful act of sacrifice to God because of his great mercy that she has found in Jesus Christ. So that's worship. It was worship for me to sit there and work with her. I was worshiping God because I was, I, I, I've given my life to, to helping people in that way because of what God has done for me. I want to just give all my time to this, right? I'm just one of the lucky few that gets paid to do it, <laughs> right? And so like I, so it was an act of, because of my understanding of the love of God, I couldn't help. It's just a logical, soulful response for me to give to her in that way. But by serving her, I'm actually serving God. And so it's worship. Okay, we had, uh, some of you might know we had uh, flooding in our basement, Okay. Uh, because the water table just is so high and our basement is so low that water just started seeping through the ground up into our basement, right? Well, we had a bunch of guys who were very handy and very skilled come in and put in many, many, many hours getting muddy and grimy and dirty and bending over and sweeping water and all this stuff and putting up systems and putting in a sump pump and putting that all the way out. You know, they spent hours and hours and hours and hours here make, taking care of this, okay? But it was worship. Because of their great love for God and their love for his church, okay? Their love for his church and the fact that they said, I know how to do this, I know how to fix this, and if I don't do it, who will? Church is just going to have to pay someone to do it, but I could do it. Right. And, and so but they but so they sacrificially gave of themselves because it was the logical, soulful response of the goodness that God has given them. So that was worship. I, I come home and my son is uh, it's his turn on the Xbox. OK, there's only one Xbox and there's technically there's two, but they all want the same one. You know how that goes. OK, so <clears throat> Xbox 360s downstairs. There's great games. You guys played them. No, anyways. OK, so. So it's, they, they have to take turns, right? They only get so much time each. So one of them is finishing up his time. The alarm goes off, and it's time for the kid to get the remote. And he says, you know what? You're really close. Why don't you just keep going? You can have my turn. And I say, son, why would you do that? You know it's your turn. Why would you give that up? He said, well, at church we were talking about how I need to love people the way I want to be loved. And he's loved me like that. And God loves us like this. So, I, you know, it's just right. Okay, That was worship. Because it was a logical, soulful act of sacrificial living in response to the goodness and the grace of God. Right? You're, you're worshiping right now. Right now, listening to my words, sitting, well, they're not my words, they're his. Listening to God's word is worship. You could be sleeping in. I mean, you'd be really sleeping in at this point, I guess. You could be out on the lake. Okay, you could be out doing all kinds of other stuff, but you decided to show up. But the reason you did it is because it's a logical, soulful response to who you see God as. And so it's worship. Okay, you have to give up something for it. That's worship. Now, singing can definitely be a part of that. Singing is, is very much a part of that. But where does it fit, right? Because once again, we just, we just dug into it and applied it to our lives. And again, singing like didn't come up at all. So where does singing fit in the midst of this? There's this great quote by C.S. Lewis. He says that praise is the culmination of our enjoyment of anything. So praise is just, it's just the result of when we enjoy something. We were built to praise. Okay? We were built to praise. And, and, and I, I've never met anyone where I said, what kind of music do you like? They say, I don't like music. No one says that. Okay? No one says, everyone likes some sort of music. You know why? Because music is like this expression of ourselves that's not just our head, it's not just our heart, it's both, right? Does that sound familiar? <coughs> like often, I mean, you've heard us say that like music is the window to the soul, 
right? And so once again, it's, it's a logical, soulful response to God and His goodness to sing, right? And, and, and the best way to do that is, is when we, the, the best times that I know that our church is singing, okay, really singing, really giving themselves, is when they got Jesus Christ laser focused and they're just, they're thankful for Him in view of His great mercy and when they sing, it just turns into this beautiful thing, this beautiful expression. They don't care about anyone else in the room. They don't care about anything else going on in their lives. They just want to sh- give Jesus a window into their soul. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Okay? The problem is, is that often life has a way of leaving us empty. Okay? If praise is the culmination of enjoyment then that means if your life isn't culminating, <laughs> you're not going to see much praise, okay? Good example of this, okay? Um, my family and I went to uh, the, uh, I remember going to the, the Avengers Endgame movie, right? You got to understand, I went and saw the first Iron Man movie. I went and saw the Hulk movie, right, before Iron Man even showed up, right? I went and saw those movies in the theater, it's like 12, 13 years ago almost, and it's and this this series is something no one's ever done before. What Disney and Marvel have done is they have had like yeah eleven twelve years of this culmination of a story, right? And 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 we've uh, the family we've seen all the movies together. We know all the stories we've seen. You know, it's, I think it's actually safe to say my daughter's a bigger fan of Marvel than I am, unbelievably. So, okay. And that big moment at the end, if you haven't seen it by now. Okay, there's a big moment at the end where suddenly a bunch of the heroes show up. She started crying. She was so happy, right? And my, my son looks at her, sees her crying, and he starts crying. And I see my kids crying. I'm kind of tearing up too. Because of this culmination of this experience that we've had together, and we bust out of the doors praising what had happened. Okay? This ha- we are built to praise. And ultimate, I mean, and, and genuine praise results in this culmination of something that we enjoy. We just can't help it. I promise you, if the twins win the World Series, and you don't, even if you don't even care much about the twins, you'll get excited because everyone else is around you is excited. How many of you are Twins fans? Do you want to see this happen? Right? Yeah. I promise. I mean, if they win this, if they win the World Series this year, you are not going to be able to help. I dare you to try not to praise. I dare you. You're not going to be able to hold it back. Why would you? Because this culmination of this experience finally gets to burst out. That's perfect. Okay, see, here's the deal. You get a chance to do that every Sunday here at Hope. You are given this opportunity to take to, for a logical, soulful response to God and his great mercy. And you get a chance to do that. And like the best way to do that, which is through music. Do we take that opportunity every time we show up? Now, here's why. Here's the problem. Because I think, I think sometimes we come into church and we come in empty, hoping that church will fill us up. Which, here's the deal. If you're empty and you need the church to fill you up, bring it on. I'll do what I can to help. But what if, what if Hope Summit was filled with people that came in already filled up? Okay? Already filled up. Already with a culmination of a great experience. If that were to happen, here's what I believe we would see. I believe that we would see people, when the songs start going, unable to contain themselves. We would see tears flowing. We would see hands raised. We would see knees bowed. We would see eyes closed. We would, dare I say it, see swaying Because you just can't help yourself. Because praise is the culmination of something that you enjoy. So often when we come to church, I think people have this mindset, okay, i got to come in and get Jeff to pop me back up in the air. You're like a balloon, right? You're like this balloon that kind of, I pop you up and then it kind of floats down and i got to pop you up again, right? Oh, life's getting me down. Better go back in. Pop. You know, that's how it feels. Okay, the, tr- the truth is, is that you, 
And, and we spend time trying to help you do this. We want to help you encounter the living God throughout your week so that when you come in, yeah, life has a way of emptying us. And again, if life has left you feeling particularly empty right now, boy, my, my sympathies to you, I get it. I understand. And church should fill you up if that's where you are. It should, and it will. But I think what would be amazing and powerful is if a majority of our people came in already full from Saturday, already full from Sunday morning devos, ready to just allow God's love to overflow out of their life. Not to fill them up, not because they need it, but they do it because they need it and he already did. And he already took care of it, right? I think that's what praise and worship could look like on Sunday mornings. And so the question that we have to ask is what's getting in your way, right? What hole needs plugged up? What difficulty, what difficult thing right now is draining you? And what can you do to fill yourself up, right? Again, we have Next Steps at Hope. Next Steps every single Sunday to help you get into your word, to help you find, to, you know, we just like say, if you want to get filled up, read this, watch this on Right Now Media, join a group, find a way to serve. It's incredible how serving other people can fill you up, right? We're trying to help you take next steps consistently so that when you come in on Sunday mornings, you can get filled up, right? So, but so here's what we're going to do, though. We're, so we're going to put this into practice right now. The worship team is going to come up here, okay? And we're going to, yeah, you guys can come on up. And, uh, and while they're getting ready, what I want you to do is I want you, there's pens in front of you if you need them. Go ahead and put these on your bulletins or something like that or pull out your phone or something. I want you to pick three things, three reasons why you follow God. Why do you love him? Why do you seek him out? Why did you show up today? Right? Three reasons why Jesus has your heart. I want you to write those three things down, okay, and I want you to focus on them. So why don't you take a quick moment, I'll be quiet, and let you pick three things, okay? So go ahead and write them out. I, I know some of you are way too cool to try this, okay? Go ahead and write them out, text them to yourself if you need to, but just let's get three things in front of you that, uh, by the way, I was always the guy that was too cool to follow directions. I probably still am. Go right. Three things, three reasons why Jesus has your heart. Because what I'm hoping will happen now, next, is that we help fill each other up a little bit here. Let's refocus a bit. Right? That's what this is about. Let's refocus. And why we show up, why we're here, right? Because then, hopefully, it'll culminate into praise. Because, folks, that's what happened in, <laughs> that's what happened to Paul in Romans 11. I promise you this. Romans 11, I read you that doxology. Let me, let me read it to you again, actually. Listen to this doxology. Listen to a man praising his God. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgment and his past beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord or who has ever been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should have to repay them? For from him and through him and for him are all things to him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now we call that a doxology. I promise you Paul didn't sit down to say, you know what I'll do? I think what this letter needs at this point is, to, is a nice doxology. Something that the church later can repeat to one another to help encourage one another. I think that's what they need, so I, got, I better make sure this sounds great. No, here's what I promise you happened. He's sitting there writing out this letter, right, or dictating this letter, however he did it. He's, he's sitting there sending this letter, and he's, his, brain, his, his mind and his heart are connected to the message of the gospel of Christ, and he's getting pumped up. He's getting excited about the fact that he's going to get to go to Rome, and he just knows that as he spreads the gospel of Jesus Christ, lives are going to be changed. 
And from there, he's going to continue on his mission and, do, and, and visit other people because this message is worth giving up everything for. He's, he's building up this case for, 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 for Jesus, and it just springs out of him. Okay? It's just, it's just the result of a life lived in sacrificial worship. Right? That's why we have the doxology. We have an example of praise as a result of one man overflowing with the goodness of God. Okay? So let's, let's do our own here. So I want to hear from you. Give me one of yours. Why do you love God? Let's hear it. He's my best friend. Best friends get me when no one else gets me. Best friends accept me when everyone else would reject me. Best friends are always there no matter what happens, right? Amen. Next. His family. Not only can he be a friend. You know, you know what I love about family? Is that they kind of have to do all those things. <laughs> but a lot of families still don't, right? And if you have a family that you feel hasn't been there for you when you need them, right? Knowing that God is always there is like blood, right? It's like blood ties strong. Blood is thicker than water, right? That's good. What do you say? Okay, yeah. So the, just simply the, the sacrifice of himself, right? How many of you parents are willing to give up your kids' life because I do something stupid? Yeah, I didn't think so. I'm sorry. I don't think I want to do the same for you. You made your mistake. You can pay for it. My son's not going to jail for your stupid decision. But he did that, right? Okay, what else? Grace. I mean, bam, can we just sum it up in one word? Who, who said that? Okay, did, I mean, I'm sure you're perfect, Dan. You didn't need it, though, right? Man, I've done some stuff. You got stuff hidden in your closet you hope people don't ever find out? Yeah, but he, he doesn't care, does he? No, that grace is amazing. What else? He's worthy of it, right? Yeah, like he deserves it. Isn't it nice to have someone who deserves to be praised? Instead of like celebrities that don't, politicians who don't, sports people who don't. We put our hope in these people and then they let us down. But see, Jesus is worthy. Yeah. All right. What else? Hope. The hope that he brings. Right? No longer am I stuck. Not sure where to go next. Not thinking nothing's going to be good anymore. We just, we have this one hope that regardless of what break comes this life, regardless of what we face tomorrow, regardless of my current circumstances or even my past circumstances, I got something that I can count on coming. Amen. What else? Purpose, right? Yeah, I'm not just sitting around twiddling my thumbs. There's a reason to get out of bed beyond just, well, I guess I should go to work and make some money so I don't die because I got to eat, you know. No, I got something beyond that. Isn't it great to wake up and know that I have purpose beyond myself? Because, boy, purpose just for me is pretty, pretty dark, pretty dreary. What else? Yes, he does. Man, we could just, we just he just gives it all, all of us love, right? Regardless of whether we deserve it, unconditional love. We could fail him today, and he's still going to love us, right? Okay, no longer do I have to worry about a, a dirty closet, right? It's like he went in and he cleaned it out. Yeah, I don't have to be ashamed of the past. I have nothing but freedom, right? Yeah, one more. He's, all right, yeah, we can end with that. He's good. It's just good, right? It's just good. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take all these reasons why we love God, and we're going to focus on that while we sing. I hope you were filled up a little bit today. Okay? If not, it's okay. It's week one. Can I implore you to come back the next three weeks? Please make it a priority because next week builds on this week. And the week after that builds on the week before. And the last week, of course, builds on that as well. Okay? Every message is intentional because we're asking God to hit the reset button, okay? But we're going to take, we're just going to take one step today. We're going to stand, and we, we, we just, all we have is a guitar and voices, okay? 
So there's nothing else. So we're going to stand. Now, the reason we stand is because it's a, you know, it's a thing of respect. And at the same time, if I promise you again, if the Twins win the World Series, you're not going to be sitting. <laughs> you will be on your feet. Okay? So let's, let's take a moment. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to get into worship. Jesus, we love you. And that's really what we want this time to be about. We want it to be about you. We want it to be about your goodness. We want it to be about your grace, the perfect love that you have for us, the way you cleaned out all of our closets, God. Lord, we just thank you. May our focus now just be solely on you. You deserve it. You deserve this praise. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen.